So what do you do if a new cat starts hanging out on your block? It's a good idea to ask around, talk to neighbors, and check lost pet boards online. Cats are abandoned all the time, especially in this part of Brooklyn. That's just a reality. So there's a good chance that they no longer have a home. This gentleman showed up at one of our colonies. Even though he's keeping his distance, his body language indicates that he may be a former house cat. The first time I saw him was the night before we rescued Charlie. While she was very vocal about asking for help, he kept his distance. He seemed unsure how to interact with the other cats. But it's clear that he was looking for food. I don't believe that he's a feral cat. Feral cats are completely unsocialized and would avoid any contact with people. Regardless of whether he's friendly or feral, I still need to make sure he gets neutered so he doesn't contribute to New York's serious cat overpopulation problem. My first step is to establish a regular feeding routine. That's a little challenging here, as there's an existing colony that regards this area as their turf, so they don't want a new cat eating their food. All the other cats in this colony have already been spayed or neutered, and they've already had breakfast. I can tell the new guy has been in some fights lately, and he's not looking for more trouble. You see the way his tail shakes like that? That's how unfixed males mark their territory. Remember that Charlie was an unfixed female when she arrived just a few days earlier. So although he may be drawn here by food, it's just as likely that he's here due to a biological urge to mate. And it's pretty clear he doesn't have anywhere else to go. I wanted to make sure he got something to eat. I was worried that if the colony scared him away too many times, he might never come back. And at the same time, I wanted to see if he was friendly. There's no way a feral cat would allow you to pat him like this. So even though he wasn't enjoying it, I knew there was a chance he might warm up. We named him Duke. I had an ASPCA appointment coming up to get him neutered, and it's clear he wasn't going in a carrier. So even though he's probably friendly, I needed to trap him to bring him to the appointment. I decided to try a drop trap first. Unfortunately, all of our colony cats were hogging the food. So then I set up a few regular traps. Once the colony cats had gotten themselves trapped a few times, they would stay clear. Now that our troublemakers have had their fun, it's time to wait for Duke to go into his trap. After getting neutered and vaccinated at the ASPCA, we delivered Duke straight to his new foster home. While we knew he may need a couple days to get settled, 
It was clear he was happy to be back inside. And he got some plain chicken baby food to sweeten the deal. Our only goal for the first few days was just to give him lots of space and to make sure that he associates us with positive things like mealtime. Are you hungry? Hey! 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 We don't know what his previous experience with people was. We can only be slow and gentle and patient. It's his decision to trust us. Hi. Hi, Bubba. Hmm. You're a good boy. You just want some attention. Yes, what a good boy. Hi. Oh my God. Just as we suspected, there was a charming, snuggly gentleman under that tough veneer. Foster families give shy cats the time and space to open up. They get to relax, to be silly, to be part of a family. until it's time to find their own. Maybe there's an outdoor cat on your block. Taking a free trap neuter return course is one of the best ways that you can help, regardless of whether they're feral or friendly.